Thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation. I'm very pleased uh, to, to speak in this uh, number theory uh, web seminar. Uh, it's uh, really a, a nice initiative that you, that you took. Uh, so uh, let me uh, speak about uh, recent uh, progress on, on this uh, method in uh, analytic number theory, uh, which is a method for uh, uh, for uh, finding uh, asymptotic estimates for sums of, uh, of arithmetic functions. Uh, so let me uh, so let me start with uh, some um, historical uh, background. Uh, so let's uh, consider the, the set of primes uh, and uh, om little omega n is the number of prime divisors of, an, of a number n. And uh, we are uh, first uh, interested in the number of uh, integers uh, which have uh, exactly k distinct uh, prime factors. So this is the, the local load uh, of the distribution of the little omega function. Now, uh, the, the first case is uh, when k is equal to one, and uh, this is uh, this essentially uh, amounts uh, to the prime number uh, theorem, uh, so which was proved uh, in uh, 1896 by Adamar and Lavalle Poussin. Uh, and uh, pi one uh, of x uh, is uh, asymptotic to uh, x uh, divided by log x. Now, uh, in 1909, uh, as a consequence of the prime number theorem, Landau uh, proved that uh, for if k is fixed and x tends to infinity, then uh, the, the, the probability that uh, a number uh, has k prime factors is actually close uh, to the probability of a Poisson law uh, with a parameter uh, log log x. So uh, here uh, I use uh, log index two for log log and log index three for triple log and so on. Uh, <clears throat> next, uh, uh, the, the next uh, step was made uh, by Hardy and Ramanujan in 1917 uh, in a very famous uh, paper where they showed that uh, the uh, that the upper bound uh, provided by the Poisson law uh, is actually valid uniformly for all k and uh, all x. So uh, there is no, uh, in, this, um, in, in this upper bound, uh, there is no uh, limit. Uh, I mean, th there is no uh, condition on, on k and x. Although um, it turns out, uh, it could be, seen later that uh, for very large k, uh, this upper bound is, is actually too large. Uh, then uh, Erdos uh, in 1948 uh, could show that if k is close to the, uh, to the mean value, uh, log log x, then uh, the, uh, the Poisson law that uh, Landau uh, found is still true, uh, so uh, uh, so we have uh, this asymptotic formula when k is uh, is is close to the to the mean value uh, up to the root. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, up to the to the the root of the variance. To the now uh, it is. We will see later that uh, actually uh, it's the only two cases in which. Uh, the constant in front uh, of the Poisson law is equal to one, is actually when k divided by log log x tends to zero, so essentially the Landau case, and the Erdős case. Now, uh, the next uh, uh, work was made by uh, L.G. Safe uh, in 1953-1954, where uh, he proved that if k divided by log log x is less than 
strictly less than two, then we have um, an asymptotic formula, but with a constant depending on the ratio k minus one divided by log log x. And uh, the, the, uh, the constant is given by this uh, formula. Well, say did not exactly uh, put it in this way, but uh, anyway, this is what it is. And uh, the proof uh, that uh, SAFE gave was incredibly complicated. Uh, he, he used uh, induction, uh, starting with the square free integers. So the pi, pi k uh, star uh, is the same definition, but uh, for square free integers. And then he uses uh, the representation of a number as, a, as the product of a square free uh, integer and a square. Uh, and uh, all, all together, I mean, he wrote uh, uh, four papers uh, to, to prove this. Uh, and uh, it was, I don't remember exactly, but it was probably over uh, 150 pages. It was in, uh, because you can imagine that if you want to, I mean, with, with this type of, uh, uh, of induction formula, uh, to keep track of the remainders when K uh, grows, uh, it becomes uh, something uh, incredibly complicated. Next, uh, Selberg, uh, just, after, uh, just after the publication of um, of uh, safe uh, papers, uh, found a very short and very elegant way to uh, to prove, uh, I mean, to reprove uh, all of our, uh, all of our of safe uh, results, and actually uh, a bit more. His idea was to use uh, Cauchy's formula uh, to identify pi k of x as the coefficient of z to the k uh, in, the, in this sum. Uh, and uh, now, uh, if you look at the Dirichlet series uh, for uh, z to the omega n, so for the, when the coefficients are z to the omega n, then uh, you can write it for when when the real part of S uh, is uh, larger than one, you can write it as this uh, Euler product, which turns out to be very close to uh, the power of the, of the zeta function, to z, uh, zeta of S to the, to the z, uh, multiplied by, uh, by uh, an Euler product, which is also the the Dirichlet series of a multiplicative function, but which converges uh, to the left of the one line. Now, around uh, s equal one, uh, zeta s looks like uh, one over s minus one, as uh, everybody knows. So zeta s to the z uh, looks like uh, s minus one to the minus z. And uh, uh, we can use uh, Hankel's formula. Uh, so uh, using uh, a Hankel uh, contour about uh, around uh, S equal one uh, to, uh, to identify, I mean, if you put it, um, oh, here, I mean, there is a, there is an, uh, no, sorry, no, that's right. Uh, so when you when you identify uh, this uh, this sum uh, using uh, uh, Hankel's formula, then you get uh, you can use uh, this uh, this formula to get uh, the uh, the main term uh, of the of pi k of x. So truncating the contour and appealing to holomorphic continuation of zeta s in a zero free region. Uh, so here I just use uh, the Adamar Lavalle Toussaint uh, zero free region yields uh, this formula, which is actually uh, 
more precise uh, and valid in a larger range than uh, safe uh, formula. Since uh, now we again uh, we have uh, we, we have this uh, lambda this constant uh, lambda of r where r is still uh, k minus one divided by log log x, but uh, in Selbeck's result now uh, for this function little omega uh, the formula is valid for when r is bounded, not just less than two as in the safe result. And you also have a remainder, so k divided by log log x squared. Uh, this, um, this always tends to zero, of course, because, uh, because k is less than a constant times log log x. And so after using the saddle point uh, method, uh, yes, for, so this is obtained, uh, after using the saddle point method for estimating the Cauchy integral, which I wrote uh, in the previous slide. Of course, uh, I mean, this gives a natural explanation for the, for the, for, for the, the formula for this lambda of R, since it is closely linked uh, to the, uh, to the Dirichlet, uh, uh, I mean, to the form of the Dirichlet series uh, of the, uh, the, with coefficients uh, z, z to the uh, to the omega n, and uh, you can see here that uh, lambda of r is equal to one only for r equals zero or one. So the lambda o and the other cases are the only ones uh, for which uh, the uh, we have exactly. Uh, the, the, the frequency is, ex is, is asymptotically equal to uh, <clears throat> the Poisson law with uh, mean value, with mean uh, log of x. Now, uh, in 1959 and 1971, Delange wrote uh, two papers where he studies uh, systematically summatory formula for coefficients of Dirichlet series, which are of the form zeta s to the rho. So I've, for, I've changed the, the z, uh, the previous z to, to uh, complex number rho uh, for the, the rest of the talk, uh, times uh, another, uh, another Dirichlet series uh, G of S, which, uh, which is supposed to be, in a sense, uh, more uh, easier to handle. So, um, this uh, provided um, many, uh, I mean, Delange found many applications uh, of this uh, method. He gave a new proof of the optimal form of the Erdoska theorem, which provides the normal distribution of uh, omega n divided by log log x, uh, uh, sorry, omega n minus the mean value divided by root log log x. So of course, I mean, this is to be expected because if you have the local laws, then you can resum to get uh, the global law. So uh, it's, it's uh, it is, uh, it is expected. Uh, he found an explicit estimate for the second term in the normal distribution, which is uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, I mean, quite accurate. Uh, and uh, he also uh, gave uh, estimates for moments uh, of uh, omega n, and for cent centered moments of the omega n function in arithmetic progressions. So he, uh, here I wrote the arithmetic progression when omega n is congruent to a mod q, but he also did the same when n itself is uh, uh, in an arithmetic progression. And uh, he found the uh, distribution in subsequences uh, uh, asymptotic expansions and so on. So uh, when, I, when I wrote uh, the first uh, edition of my book on number theory, 
uh, I, uh, I, I, I mean, um, uh, I, I studied uh, this method again, uh, and I uh, provided uh, some effective forms of uh, the previous results, and I named uh, this method uh, after Selberg and Delange. So one of one of the of the results uh, which I found maybe easily uh, maybe easily stated. So suppose we have uh, a Dirichlet series which can be written as a product of a complex power of the zeta function times uh, a multiplicative uh, well not necessarily multiplicative times a um, another Dirichlet series with coefficients little g of n, and suppose that you have absolute convergence of the this uh, series uh, g of n and of a number of derivatives uh, at s equal one. So, uh, and you suppose uh, so this uh, quantity is. Uh, is finite, then you can write uh, the mean value of Fn. So this Fn coming from this uh, function capital F, as you have a polynomial in, uh, in one over log x. Well, well generalized polynomial uh, and a remainder. And the remainder uh, can be bounded in terms of this HK uh, by this formula. And this result is uh, completely uniform in H and K. So it means that we can take here uh, K uh, to 10 to infinity. Uh, just uh, we take the, the minimum uh, value of uh, all uh, capital K is here uh, to get uh, the remainder as, as small as, uh, as possible. So um, another hypothesis uh, are analytic continuation for this function G of S in a zero free region of zeta of S. There is an alternative form of the result uh, if uh, the real part of rho is less, strictly less than one, then there is a function alpha rho, which is continuous on zero one and with uh, values in, uh, with complex values. And you can write uh, the mean value in this form. So then you always have uh, a remainder term, which is, uh, which is essentially of the size of the remainder in the prime number theorem. And this closed form of the main term uh, is um, the uh, analogous to, uh, the, um, uh, to, to the logarithmic integral in the prime number theorem. So in some cases, it's, it is uh, especially if you want to have a resummation or if the function f will depend on the parameter and you want to integrate uh, or, or to, to, have, uh, to average over this parameter, this close form uh, is sometimes uh, very, very useful. So this uh, method altogether is very, very uh, useful, very handy. And there are plenty of examples of applications because there are plenty of, uh, of, of functions in uh, number theory uh, for which the Dirichlet series in a way uh, is uh, close to, um, uh, to a, a complex power of the zeta function. So uh, first of all, I mean, you can exploit the complete uniformity in X and K. For instance, uh, if you look at the Dirichlet series of one over phi n to the s, where phi n is the Euler uh, is the um, uh, is the Euler function, then you can write it as zeta s times g of s, 
and g of s is this function. So uh, then, uh, of course, you have to understand, I mean, it's not completely uh, obvious to understand uh, this, uh, this function, but you know that the, uh, you have, of course, uh, analytic con uh, continuation uh, at the left of, uh, of, the, of the part of the, uh, of the line, the real part of S is equal to one. The row is one, of course, the, the exponent. And you immediately get that the number of integers for which phi of n is less than x uh, is asymptotic to, so, well, this just stems out of the, of the value of, of g of s. And with this, uh, with this uh, 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 remain the term. So, uh, of course, uh, this, uh, this means that if you look at the number of integers which have a given phi of n, uh, then you can uh, subtract, I mean, the main terms between x and x minus one, and you get uh, this bound for the number of integers with a given phi of n, which is uh, I mean, actually quite a good bound, uh, uh, even though, I mean, the, this formula is not made for that, but uh, it's, not, it's not easy to find a, a good bound for, for, uh, for this uh, quantity. Uh, if uh, one uh, uh, an analyzes uh, the function g of, uh, g of s uh, further, uh, one can go, uh, one can use the method, one can push the method uh, a, a little uh, further, and uh, we can get uh, that the remainder is actually exactly of the size of the remainder in the prime number theorem. But this, uh, I mean, uses the uh, exponential sums uh, p minus one to the it. Uh, another application just uh, is the, the average distribution of divisors. Uh, this was done uh, in a paper with Dress and Desouillet a long time ago. Uh, so suppose you count uh, the divisors of, of an integer n with, uh, with uniform probability, one of the, the total number of divisors, and you look you, at the average of the probability that the divisor is less than n to the u, or u between zero and one. Then uh, using the, the selberg delange method with now uh, rho is equal to one half, the one half comes from the, from the fact that the probability, uh, the total probability, I mean, um, the, the total number of divisors is, is uh, tau of n, uh, and you look, uh, you, you will have coefficients one over tau of n, uh, which are uh, um, associated to the, to the one half, because the, uh, the, the number of, uh, of divisors of a prime number is two, uh, and uh, you have to divide by this, so you get one half. So uh, and this, uh, you can get, uh, I mean, this uh, formula, which shows that on average, the divisors of an integer are distributed um, along, uh, I mean, with the, the arc sine law. Another application, uh, suppose you want to estimate the, the, the mean value of one over omega n, then you use this formula uh, this trivial formula that uh, you just have to integrate between zero and one. Uh, well, the, there is a remainder which I didn't write, but uh, it, it's, uh, yes, one should uh, maybe um, integrate between zero and infinity instead of zero and one. Uh, so you get this formula. Uh, and the, this t to the omega n is of course, uh, I mean, you can use uh, the selberg delange, delange method with the uh, rho is equal to t. And you find uh, this formula. Uh, so 
you have an asymptotic uh, series with beta j of log log x divided by, by powers of log x. And the beta j's are, uh, for, uh, I mean, are given by this, uh, by this formula for which you also have a asymptotic series. So there are plenty, plenty of uh, applications. Uh, I just wrote uh, three of them, but you can find really many. Now, uh, what about uh, new hypothesis in this uh, method? Uh, so, uh, to summarize, the standard approach is to have a Dirichlet series, which is written as the product of a power, a complex power of the zeta function times another uh, Dirichlet series. Uh, associated to a uh, function, to an arithmetic function G. So uh, the coefficients of zeta s to the rho are known as the Pilz divisor function, so which I write uh, tau, tau index rho. So, and to this uh, product of the Dirichlet series, uh, you can associate uh, a conv a Dirichlet convolution f is the Dirichlet convolution of tau in tau rho uh, and the function g, which is associated to the to the function to the to the Dirichlet series uh, g of s. Now uh, you can apply the the Selberg Delange method to zeta s to the rho itself. I mean with when there is no function g, then the method gives something very good, which uh, which I wrote uh, in this way. Uh, and here uh, you have this uh, remainder term, which is which is uh, completely uniform uh, in k. So you can uh, you can you can have here k uh, equal to uh, some power of log x, for instance. So you have this very good. A pre, uh, approximation of tau index rho. Now, uh, yeah, then you can write the convolution formula and the mean value of, uh, of f will be given by gn times this tau rho of x over n. And uh, so, if you if you apply this formula here, you find, or at least you expect in the general case, then you have this type of uh, of, of approximation, where the lambda j are linear combinations of these of the derivatives of uh, the function g of s at s equal one. Now, of course, depending on the regularity of, uh, of the function g, uh, well, the, 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 the limit, uh, I mean, the, uh, the largest uh, capital J here, which you can use uh, with a useful remainder, depends on this function g. Uh, and all the, the hypotheses that uh, we uh, considered to this point implied convergence of these gamma j's, these gamma, gamma h. So uh, if the, if uh, I mean these converge, then we, we know what the lambda j's are supposed to be and uh, we can expect using convolution and the Dirichlet hyperbola method, uh, we can expect to have uh, such um, asymptotic formula. Now, uh, last year, uh, Grandville and Kukulopoulos published a paper uh, where they investigate new uh, hypotheses uh, which do not 
um, they, they don't consider hypotheses on the Dirichlet series G of S, but directly on the function little g, which is uh, associated to, to, to this function. So they, they only consider the case when G is multiplicative function. And they, they assume that, uh, that we have this condition GP, which I call GP, and I will refer to it as GP uh, in the rest of this talk, uh, where uh, GP, so we suppose that G is essentially bounded on the primes and small on average. So you gain, so if a G, GP was one, you would get uh, the sum of log P's, which is uh, equivalent to X. And you suppose that you, you have a, you can spare a, a power, a positive power of, uh, of log X. And also uh, F is in absolute value less than tau index R. So, uh, uh, so it means that essentially F, FP is uh, less than R in absolute value. As we shall see later, this is not stated in the paper by Granville and Kukulopoulos, but it turns out that uh, the GH, the, the derivative of the, of the corresponding Dirichlet series at one may, I, I mean, they could diverge. So, so we, we can't use, I mean, this formula because this, this series uh, I mean, is not convergent. In, in the general case. However, this, this uh, condition enables one to, to use the right derivative uh, of, uh, the, of the function capital G. And these are defined as long as this H, uh, I mean, the, the order of the derivative is less than capital A. So we expect to have this uh, formula, this, we expect to have this approximation with now with J uh, is the largest, uh, the largest integer, which is strictly less than A. Because we know that we can't, we don't have, I mean, these gamma, gamma H star are not defined uh, for larger h. And this is actually what uh, Granville and Kukulopoulos uh, find. So we assume that f is less than tau r. We assume gp with, with this capital A, strictly positive. And the remainder is less than x times log log x. Here, this is the Kronecker uh, lambda. Uh, delta and divided by log x to the a plus one minus r, but not minus j, minus r, or uh, not, uh, I mean, here, I mean, well, I will comment uh, this. Uh, so the lambda j's are defined just as in the classical case but now with the gamma H star in place of the gamma J. But remember, if uh, I go back to this uh, formula, uh, the main term in this formula is obtained when J is equal to zero. So it is uh, a constant times X mul multiplied by log X to the row minus one. So, the, the size of this of this uh, of this mean value is expected to be x times log x to the row minus one. Now, uh, the remainder here is x multiplied by say log x to the r minus one minus a. 
So contrary to uh, pure selberg delange estimate, this uh, formula does not necessarily provide an asymptotic formula because we could have that the main term is uh, smaller, actually much smaller than uh, what is uh, presented as a remainder term. So in that case, uh, this uh, theorem only furnishes an upper bound uh, and no, no more uh, for, the, for the mean value of f. But there are results in uh, the literature which uh, provide the uh, upper bound uh, in, uh, in, in in actually more general cases. Um, so uh, at least, I mean, under this hypothesis, we can prove that the mean value is less than uh, this, uh, I mean, log x divided by log x to this uh, exponent. And uh, this exponent uh, so we have, we have here a constant k, which turns out to be optimal uh, when for f real, in the real case, I didn't state uh, other cases. Uh, and it turns out to be a better upper bound if uh, a turns out to be uh, fairly small. And of course, uh, in the, the hypothesis uh, GP, uh, well, the smaller, I mean, the smaller A is, uh, the more general is the, the result. So uh, we are, we are uh, inclined to consider a small A and rather than larger values of, of this parameter. If rho is equal to zero and F is real, actually uh, this constant K may be replaced by one minus Two over pi, uh, which uh, which turns out also will come back to this two over pi, which turns out to be uh, also uh, optimal. Now, with this uh, result, we have uh, we have a number of questions. Now, the first is: uh, Can we modify the hypothesis, the assumptions? so that we are sure that we have a genuine asymptotic expansion for the, for the, for, for the mean value uh, of x and not just an upper bound. This is of course the, the, main, uh, the main question. Then, uh, is it, I mean, we have here rather strong assumption on f. It is, uh, f is in absolute value less than tau r. Can we re relax the assumptions aside of GP, of course, and simplify the proof? Because the proof in uh, Granville Kukulopoulos is uh, rather complicated. The paper is uh, over 32 pa 30 pages long, and uh, the proof is uh, somewhat, well, not, let's say, not, not quite uh, natural. And the, th the third question is, uh, I mean, is the result optimal if we use uh, GP alone? If we have this uh, assumption on, the, on the, the values of the function G at primes, uh, what, what are the limitations? So I will try to, to answer uh, these, uh, these three questions. Now, uh, so the results I will shall describe uh, is a recent work with uh, Regis de la Bretèche. So re regarding question one, so question one is, can we, what hypothesis can yield the genuine asymptotic expansion? So we propose the following answer. So recall F is always is the convolution of the Pitts divisor function. So that is the, 
the coefficient of zeta s to the rho uh, and the g. So we assume uh, conditions which are fairly standard in analytic number theory, which come from a, a well-known paper of Xu uh, in 1980. And uh, so the uh, fp, f the p nu is less than some power, to, uh, some constant to the nu, and on average, fp is less than r. But we don't ask that fp is always less than r, but only on average. And now uh, we replace the function, the, the assumption gp, by an assumption, by um, uh, the same thing, but in short intervals. So the intervals are short in a way that the, uh, Z is, can go down uh, to some power strictly less than one of X, but arbitrary, uh, I mean, this alpha can be arbitrary small. And then we have the, the, the remainder. Now we have uh, the, the, the exponent here is A plus one, minus the maximum of zero and the real part of rho. So it means that if the real part of rho is positive, uh, I mean, is non-negative, then we get, now we are sure that we get an asymptotic formula. Uh, now, it turns out that this limitation is necessary. Uh, we can, find, a we, we can construct a function f for which rho is equal to minus r, so any negative uh, real number, and uh, that the, the uh, actually we have uh, the, the mean value is larger than that. So we can, we, we can't do better essentially as apart, apart from this uh, log, 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 the power of log log x, we cannot do better than this, uh, this upper bound. And uh, the, the function is actually rather easy to construct. We, we write f as the convolution of tau to the uh, index minus r and g, and gp is just this, this function, p to the i divided by log p uh, to the a. And of course, it satisfies the, the short uh, interval condition, even on absolute value. Uh, but uh, this p to the i uh, modifies uh, the, 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 the behavior and, uh, and we have this uh, counterexample. Now, uh, what can we do uh, uh, to relax the assumptions of, uh, uh, of GP? Uh, and uh, simplify, uh, simplify a size of GP and simplify the proof. Uh, <clears throat> we use a friable summation, I would say more later, uh, time is running, I think. And uh, we can, using the, uh, the friable summation, we can get the following thing. So we have, now we assume that FP is, um, less than r in some average sense, which is the usual average sense uh, for the in, use in the in sieve theory. And we have this uh, mild condition of the growth of the FPs. And in that case, uh, we get that the, the remainder in the selberg delange formula is less than x. Now we have log log a triple iterated logarithm uh, and still log x to the a plus one minus r. So these assumptions are not directly comparable to those which are described by Granville and Kukulopoulos uh, for an extension of theorem A, uh, but uh, they authorize uh, occasional large values of fp, which the latter uh, does not. Uh, but we still have uh, this uh, exponent minus r here instead of the expected row. Uh, and uh, un unlike uh, the analysis uh, of uh, Granville and Kukulopoulos, 
uh, no, I mean, our analysis does not uh, uh, ascribe a special, any special role to the, to the case when A is an integer. Now, what are the limitations under the assumption GP alone? Suppose C is less than one, we can exhibit a function satisfying GP with rho is equal to zero and such that the remainder term is that large. Uh, so, well, I, I don't have time to describe the, 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 the counterexample in detail, but uh, anyway, uh, what uh, this, uh, this counterexample says is that essentially the exponent r under gp alone without the short interval condition is that this exponent r is essentially uh, optimal so uh, i just uh, I, I do not insist on, on the on the counter example uh, now uh, I will. Uh, I, I would like to describe uh, briefly the ideas of the proofs. Uh, for theorem one, which gives uh, the result with the maximum of row uh, of the real part of row and uh, and um, uh, and zero, uh, we we know that uh, uh, if we have if we have only GP, then the series, uh, the series GN over N, and a fortiori uh, the derivative may diverge. So, but if we use the short interval condition, we can show that, uh, for instance, if G is supported on square free integers, which is a case to which uh, one can reduce, uh, which one can reduce. Uh, if we look at uh, the sum of gn over n over integers which k prime factors, we can actually split the prime factors into disjoint intervals uh, with uh, with the acceptable uh, remainder, and uh, then we just have uh, that uh, the the size of the of these very small intervals uh, agree to the fact that n is uh, less than x. And it turns out that uh, this will be the general term of a convergent series. So, uh, so we get that the, under the, the short interval condition, this series gn over n and the necessary derivatives actually do converge uh, because we can use then uh, some Standard bounds, which are, by the way, also obtained uh, using the selberg delong method for integers with uh, for which the little omega function, the number of prime factors, is too large, uh, which uh, shows uh, it is uh, the, these, uh, the contribution will be uh, negligible. So eventually, we get convergence of this gamma h. So we can finish the proof using the very good approximation for this tau, t rho of y obtained from the classical Selberg de Lange and the convergence of these uh, coefficients. Now, for theorem two, uh, we use a uh, friable summation. So, um, <clears throat> friable summation is, um, it was, uh, I think the first time uh, it was defined by Duffin in uh, 1957. It was rediscovered by Fouvry and I uh, in 1991. We say that a series has friable sum if when you sum over integers for which the largest prime factor is less than y. Uh, so First of all, you, you want that this converges and it has a limit which is equal to S. Uh, friable summation is a very uh, useful tool, very interesting. Uh, so uh, for, in for instance, if you use, if you look at this, uh, at, at this series, uh, it has a friable sum 
which is not equal, not always equal to the usual sum. Uh, but when it is equal, we say that the series is regular for the friable summation method. So uh, friable regularity uh, is, um, is in a way central in, uh, in analytic number theory, uh, since uh, it is very easy to see that the friable sum of mu n over n is zero. But to show that it is regular means that this series actually convergent and is equal to zero is equivalent, of course, to the prime number theorem. Another uh, very interesting uh, thing is that the prime number theorem uh, is actually equivalent. Uh, I wrote just one way, but it's both ways uh, to, the, to the fact uh, that, um, uh, sorry, so the prime number theorem implies that this series has friable sum z zeta of one uh, of one plus i t, although we know that this uh, series is not uh, convergent. So uh, the prime number theorem is actually equivalent to uh, the the fact that this series has a friable sum. Now, uh, friable summation uh, of Fourier series uh, verifies Jordan theorem but avoids the Gibbs phenomenon. Uh, this is a, a result of a laboratory of myself uh, five years ago. So, if you take a function of bounded variation and the uh, uh, cn of n, cn of f is the Fourier coefficient, then uh, the friable sum converge to the function itself. So it's quite interesting because this is a subsum of the, uh, of the, the, the original uh, Fourier series and the supremum converges to the supremum. So there is no uh, Gibbs uh, phenomenon. There is also a case, uh, I mean, if there is a Lipschitz exponent and uh, there are many applications, but I don't have time now to describe them. So let's go back to the to the to Selberg de Lange. So we know that under GP, we know that the series may diverge, but this series has a friable sum, actually, which is the derivative at sigma equal one of the friable of the of the friable sum with exponent uh, sigma. So we are in business. Uh, we can use a uh, friable summation uh, to, uh, to, to get, uh, I mean, to, uh, to try to estimate the mean values under uh, this uh, assumption GP. So we just have, we just use a convolution, uh, a, con a simple convolution method. Uh, we have this FY we, we convert, we, G, GY is just GP of nu, but restricted to P less than Y. And we have this function FY. Uh, so so uh, FY of P will be equal to F of P if P is less than Y and equal exactly to rho if P is larger than Y. And uh, when we, with, a, with a small, uh, I mean, with a small uh, uh, sieving uh, over the, the friability, uh, we can actually have a, a very good uh, control of the mean value of Fy. And, um, and we, get, uh, we get exactly, uh, I mean, everything which is needed for Fy. And then uh, we can handle the, 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 we can handle the, the, the rest using uh, essentially a sieve argument. And uh, then we have a, a, an inductive trick which enables to replace the powers of log log x by powers of triple log x. So let me uh, finish. Uh, so it's a constant concern in analytic number theory to uh, try to 
evaluate the mean values of a multiplicative function knowing the values uh, at primes. There have been many uh, uh, theorems which are which enter in the class of comparison theorems, Birzing, Hollas, Montgomery, Montgomery Vaughan, and so on, which uh, for which the hypothesis are that suppose fn is less than some multiplicative function rn in absolute value or in modulus. Suppose that the RPs are sufficiently regular, the RP to the new with new larger than two, not too large, and the, the real part of, uh, of, uh, of FP is, is close to, uh, to RP on average. Then we have an asymptotic estimate for the ratio of the mean value of F and the mean value of R. Uh, in a recent paper of mine, uh, I, I made this uh, effective. So uh, there is an epsilon here, which, uh, and uh, if um, we have uh, these uh, conditions, so it's here R, RP minus the real part of FP should be small on average with a weight one over P, only when P essentially is uh, larger than X to the epsilon. And you get the the epsilon in the in the remainder, so you have a, a genuine comparison theorem. The general philosophy of Selberg de Lange estimates is that you, do, you now you compare a, f with tau index rho instead of with a majorant, and you look at asymptotic expansions instead of asymptotic formula. Now. We have to note that uh, FP, uh, now this hypothesis A implies that FP is constant on average, which was, uh, which, was uh, which uh, happened in, in, the, um, in Virzin's first paper, but not later, while comparison theorems actually do not uh, imply that F uh, should be constant uh, on average. Thank you very much. <laughs>